Hey everyone, it is time for another Remington's Ramblings. <clears throat> it's been a while since I've done one of these. So, let's talk about gaming resources. Alright? When I mean gaming resources, I mean things like um, publications that will tell you about new games that are going to be coming out. Alright? Now, I'm sure that many of you are familiar with White Dwarf. This is the uh, latest issue of White Dwarf, August 2013. I This is the first issue of White Dwarf that I bought since they went to their new format, and I haven't read it yet, but um, I gotta say, just from the cover, I really like the direction they went in. I mean, it has like this, this dull kind of uh, coat to it, but whenever there's a picture or the... Uh, the title here, it's glossy, I mean, there we go, now you can see it. See how it's like all glossy and dull? You know, I like that kind of thing. That's, that's like a, that's a high quality kind of thing. This is a very good publication for showing off their company's products, but more or less, what, I know that at least the uh, previous um, editions of White Dwarf, they were basically selling you stuff. I mean, they're and they're trying. They're still trying to sell you stuff, but, um... Um... I mean, I, I remember, like, the last time I, I bought a White Dwarf, I think it was when they released the, uh, the new Flyers. Let me see if I have one of these issues here. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, I thought it would be right there. I must have put it somewhere else. I'm not going to take the time to look for it, but... It was when the uh, Storm Talon came out. And, uh, yeah, I wanted the rules for, like, the, all the new flyers and everything, because they published them in the White Dwarf. That was one of the few issues that, you know, they actually gave you... something that the player would actually want. I mean, they gave you rules for new models that were coming out. That was... I mean, you needed the issue in order to play. Kind of like how that, you know, you needed those two issues in order to play uh, Sisters of Battle. You needed that um, issue to play uh, those flyers up until they published the 6th uh, edition rulebook. But, um, mostly, it, the White Dwarf was just trying to sell you stuff. You were basically paying about 10 to $12 for them to advertise to you. Because the magazines were nothing but advertisements. It was like, hey, here's some new models that are coming out, here's some more pictures of the models, here's some more pictures of the models, here's some painted models, you know, um, this is, you know, they. I don't think they put the price in the magazine because they didn't want to shock people that picked this thing up off the shelf and said, huh, huh, models, oh, these things are cool, like, oh, how much do they cost? Ah! No way! But, um, this magazine has a lot more pages than previous, uh, edition, the previous edition did. And, I mean, uh, I mean, they're, they're still, of course, like I said, advertising to you, but, I mean, there's just, you know, honestly, more, more content in there. Um, so, the only reason I, I bought this issue is because, um, I do have a Lizardman army. It is completely unassembled, unbuilt, unpainted, un-everything. They're still sitting in their boxes in the garage. Because I just can't get around to them. But uh, I'm very interested in Lizardmen getting their 8th edition update. White Dwarf has their own publication, okay? Now, if you're not exactly a GW fan, but you're a Privateer Press fan, guess what? They have their own publication, too. It's called No Quarter. It's a magazine that comes out, it seems, every two months. And once again, this is the latest issue. This is from July of uh, this year, 2013. And basically, on the cover, they're talking about High Command, which is their uh, new... Uh, they call it a deck-building card game. Since I don't really play card games, I'm not sure exactly what that means. I think you just buy a box, and then you can build a deck with the stuff that comes in there. And they'll probably release lots of expansions, but I don't think it's like uh, Magic, where you just buy 
millions of packs of cards to make some kind of invincible deck. But um, yeah, if you are interested in um, War Machine or Hordes or Iron Kingdoms, the RPG, and I'm really into Iron Kingdoms, this is the magazine for you. But if you're not Privateer Press and you're not GW, guess what? You're probably not going to have a magazine that you know you can sell just your products in. You're going to have to turn to other publications. This is one. This is called Casket Works. Casket Works is uh, different in that it has just one company's stuff in it. This is all about Reaper Miniatures. If you don't know um, who Reaper Miniatures are, they're a company that's based in Texas and they make basically mostly fantasy miniatures that can be used with pretty much any game system. They market them so that um, they can be used for your tabletop RPG games, so you can use them for Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder. And as a matter of fact, um, they actually officially make Pathfinder miniatures. Alright, so there you go. Pathfinder, right there. Bam. If you're wanting to get miniatures for your Pathfinder game, Reaper Miniatures makes all the official minis for Pathfinder. But essentially all this is, I mean, this is, this is an old catalog. Uh, I think this is from December of, uh, probably December of last year. But it's just a catalog that has all these different minis that they make in here, you know. There, there's, they, they don't really, they have, they have some games that, you know, that they put out, they say. Um, they have Dark Haven Legends, uh, I think their, their big game is Warlord. They used to have this game called Cav, which uh, was kind of like Battletech, but that game has languished without support for years, so uh, that's unfortunate. But if you are looking to get some uh, some fantasy minis or even some sci-fi minis, um, go down to your local game store and ask if they have an issue of Casket Works. I don't know how often Reaper puts out Casket Works. It, may, it might be like once a year, twice a year. This one says it is issue number 29. I don't know how long they've been publishing it. Alright, so. Reaper Miniatures. Really awesome. They're a company that doesn't really have a game per se, but they do have their own catalog. Now, as I was trying to say, if you are a company, a large company, or a smaller company, or even just a garage business that has a game and you want to advertise it, well, you obviously don't have your own magazine. And there is no way Games Workshop is going to publish an ad for your game in their magazine. They used to do that back when the entire magazine was black and white. But uh, no, now it's in full glossy color. So you're never going to be able to advertise in their magazine. And the same goes for No Quarter. Only Privateer Press products in here. It is nothing but their stuff. And games that they put out, such as like Level 7 and Monster Apocalypse, which uh, if you're interested in getting minis for that, they are going up for sale <clears throat> this week, which will be... Crap, what was it? August... August 2nd through August 9th of 2013. Anyways, um, you're going to have to... If you're a smaller publisher, you're going to have to go through a different company, alright? I just discovered a brand new resource, which I should have known about years ago, but... Um, it is called Game Trade Magazine, GTM. This is really awesome. Um, it, it's, it's mostly just ads. It is kind of like if you go to um, you know, your local comic shop and it's a larger one, you know, and they get stuff from uh, Diamond, Diamond Comics, um, they'll usually have this giant catalog that's like this thick called Previews. And it has pretty much all the comics, all the figures, all the merchandise, anything and everything that is comic book related or, you know, just, just gamer or anime related that is going to be coming out in the next few months. You go there to your shop, you look through the catalog, 
you fill out a list of what you want, and then you know the the uh, shop owner will put in an order. Um, but sometimes they will have things like this lying around. Game Trade Magazine. I was attracted to this because of the cover. This one has the four new minis that's going to be coming out for Wave 3 of uh, Fantasy Flight's uh, miniatures game, Star Wars X-Wing. I really love Star Wars X-Wing. I mean, if the, the, the game can be played rather quickly. I mean, you can get in a game and like 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, and it's just so much fun. And yeah, usually, like when I'm playing like a game, I get mad when I lose. I'm <clears throat> rather competitive, and I hate when I lose just because I. It, it, it's not the loss really. It's the expenditure of time I put into a game that I then don't really. I, I don't get a win out of it. I, I feel as though my time has just been wasted. And if we're talking games like Warhammer 40k, we're talking an expenditure of like two or three hours. Just the two or three hours of my life is gone, and I've lost. I've not only lost my time, I lost the game. But uh, with miniatures, I mean, uh, with, with, with the X-Wing miniatures game, even if I lose, I'm not mad. Because I literally had fun with this. Even if I lost, I had fun. So the uh, the miniatures that are going to be coming out in Wave 3 are the B-Wing, the TIE Bomber, the uh, the, tri the, the Tidarian Shuttle, or the, the, the Tri-Wing Shuttle, and this one uh, ship called, I think is like the Hawk 280 or something like that. I don't quite remember what it was called, but um, Basically, in this this release, all these ships are like a Hawk 290. Anyways, all these ships are support ships. You're not going to be um, taking a whole bunch of B-wing fighters and going against your you know your opponent and utterly destroying him with them, because even though they have some pretty good guns, uh, their maneuverability. Uh, is kind of crap. And a Lambda class shuttle, that's what this is, the Lambda class shuttle. I mean, it's a shuttle. It is not a fighter. So you're thinking, why in the world would a shuttle be in a fighter game? Well, it does have some weapons, um, but it is mostly there for support. It has abilities that will support other ships. I would not have known all this stuff about these ships. I've seen pictures of them, yeah, I knew what they were, but I didn't know, you know, their abilities and their the versatility within the game because I hadn't read this. All the things that I had read online, uh, they just didn't tell me what I needed to know. So this was uh, this was really awesome. Another thing that attracted me to the, this is um, it was sealed up in a plastic bag. Usually when magazines are sealed up in plastic bags, it means that they don't want someone grabbing off the shelf and reading it before they buy it, if they even bother to buy it at all. Like, this issue of White Dwarf! There's nothing in here. Not one thing. Nothing extra came with it. But it was sealed up in a plastic bag. Why? Because they want it to look nice on the store shelf, and they want you to buy it before you read it. I've never come across a new quarter that was sealed up in plastic. Um, but, this Game Trade magazine was sealed in plastic. That's because it came with this. This is a game called Spot It. It's a card game. The cards are all circular. It comes with uh, basic instructions on how to play. And then it comes with a sample of the game. Now, I think the, the game said it came with like uh, 50 or 100 cards. These are, th this is just 10 cards. And it's just a sample. It allows you to play some short, simple games so you can try the game out before you buy it. Now, how awesome is that? They actually give you a sample of the game so you can try the game yourself before you decide to spend your hard-earned money on it. That's really awesome. And it came in this piddly little game trade magazine, which has a nice glossy cover, but inside all the pages are printed on this dull, cheap newsprint. Yeah, it is in full color, but I thought that 
that was just a really nice touch that this game company went ahead and included a uh, a demo version of their game spot it in this che somewhat cheaply produced game trade magazine game trade magazine went a step further what I just showed you was the July issue next up we have the August issue and let me go ahead and clear all the stuff off the cover that I've sitting on here that I want to talk about all right this is the August issue of Game Trade Magazine, and here on the cover they're talking about the uh, the Star Trek uh, Attack Wing, which is basically the Star Trek version of the X-Wing miniatures game. Basically, you get a bunch of the Star Trek ships from all these different factions, and then you have space battles with them. And, you know, you can attach uh, different named crew members to different ships to give them different abilities. Um... But uh, one of the things that I really loved about this issue was all the stuff that came with this issue, all right? Now, let's go from the most bizarre to the most awesome. Most bizarre is a bookmark, okay? Now, if you are a gamer, you've probably heard of Munchkin. This is the official Munchkin Apocalypse bookmark of beast buffing, okay? This is an official game piece that you can use to play in um, in Munchkin. Basically, there's rules on the back for how to use this uh, this bookmark. Essentially, uh, it says that you when you want to play this bookmark, you pull it out and pass it around to everyone at the table so they can read it and you know and see that it is an actual real uh, game piece. And then. You play this on a monster, and everyone on the table can buff the monster with all these different cards that they happen to be holding in their hands to make the monster really tough. And then the person who drew the monster is going to have a really tough time beating it. And then there's rules for if they win or if they lose, you know, uh, what to do with the bookmark. That, that, that's that's uh, really awesome. It's bizarre, but it's awesome that they, uh, they gave you this. <clears throat> Next up, um, now who remembers the TV show Firefly? Um, I didn't get to see it when it was on the air. A lot of people didn't get to see it when it was on the air. They got to see it on DVD, like myself. Uh, well, um, Gale Force 9 is this game company that mostly was known for making hobby accessories. They made tape measures. They sold flock. They sold uh, ground turf and stuff to put on your miniatures bases. Well, I didn't know this, but they actually do put out some games. And guess what? They licensed Firefly, and they released a uh, an exclusive ship. Not just the card here for the stats, but an actual mini of the ship. All right? So, obviously, if you look at this, this looks like a green version of the Firefly class ship Serenity, but it is actually called the Artful Dodger. The Artful Dodger is a ship that is exclusive to Game Trade Magazine. You won't be able to get it anywhere else. So if you want to use the Artful Dodger, you got to get uh, Game Trade Magazine issue number 260, 162, issue number 162 from August of 2013. And yeah, it, apparently it comes with like a very large crew complement and stuff, and it comes with this really good engine that you get to put on right here when you have like the full game. So instead of it being a game that can be played between two to four players, it can be played with two to five with uh, this card and this ship. That's really awesome. They gave you uh, game pieces for uh, a game. Now. Here's the best one of all. Who here has heard of the game Malifaux? Me, I've heard of Malifaux. I haven't played it because uh, no one around here plays it. And honestly, I'm not going to buy a game that I won't be able to play with anyone. But I'm interested in Malifaux. Apparently, Malifaux is coming out with their second edition. They've gone through all their rules and they've changed a bunch of things, refined a bunch of things. They're going to be releasing a second edition. And in game trade, 
uh, magazine issue 162, the August issue, they give you a free mini for their game. This is the Witchling Stalker from Weird Miniatures, the makers of uh, Malifaux. So, it's going to be really fuzzy, but here's your Witchling Stalker guy, and it comes to the base and everything. You know, it is a full plastic mini, no metal or anything. I just thought that that was just truly awesome that they went ahead and they gave you a free miniature. And you know what? One of the best part, the absolute best part of Game Trade Magazine, it is 100% free. Okay? Now, so far as I know, it, the magazine is supposed to be free. Some um, comic stores might charge you for them. But uh, when I went to my local comic store, the guy gave it to me absolutely free. It was just sitting there on the shelf. And I said, oh, Game Trade Magazine, what's that? And he says, oh, it's this magazine that has a bunch of games in it. You want one? Take one. It's free. With, like, you know, freaking all this stuff in it. All this stuff that was in there. Absolutely free. And not only that, but this one, too. That one was free, too. Along with this game demo. So, uh, when was the last time a uh, major game company that has their own magazine gave you free minis? I uh, went to my local uh, game shop probably about a year, year and a half ago, and they have a lot of old stock. I'm talking really old stock. And one of the things that uh, they had was the magazine, uh, White Dwarf, for when... Warhammer Fantasy came out with, I think, their 7th edition, that uh, Battle for Skull Pass. And inside the magazine, they gave you this. Free miniatures. Now, I have split them apart just so I can store them more easily. But these are official Games Workshop Fantasy miniatures. There's a dwarf, and there's a goblin. And these can be used with uh, your fantasy armies, or... I, I got them because I wanted them for a D&D &D game. And, you know, uh, I mean, I know Battle for Skull Pass is old, but, you know, the guy was selling the magazine with the miniatures for like 99 cents, so I couldn't say no, you know. But, I mean, how long ago did Battle for Skull Pass come out? We, that was probably five, six years ago, something like that. That was the last time GW actually gave you free stuff. All right. So here's these smaller publishers giving you free stuff, including, you know, Malifaux, which is still a small game, but it is it it is very much growing. Anyhow, um, this has been my video about uh, gaming resources. If you are interested in anything that you saw, go ahead and check them out. I mean, you use your Google foo or go down to your local game shop and ask if they have Game Trade Magazine. That is all I have for you this time, and I am signing out.